Welcome to Yagba's Epic Tales. The title of today's story is Oma and Oyiwodu, the Dancing Twin Sisters. Once upon a time, in a small village in the heart of the Middle Belt region of Nigeria, there lived a couple. The husband's name was Idoku while the wife's name was Emiene. Idoko and Emiene had been married for six years without a child. This made them seek solution from place to place. At last, they found a solution from a diviner villages away. This union is destined to not have children until it is 15 years old. Only then will you have just a child. But fear not, for the child will bring you joy and cause you to gain wealth and affluence all over the seven kingdoms. It will compensate for your years of loneliness without a child. Go back home and be patient till it is time, the diviner said to them. Emiene was not okay with what the diviner said. How could she be childless for 15 years and then will have only one child? It was unacceptable to her. Idoko asked her to be patient like the diviner advised. After all, they won't be childless all their life, and more so, the child will be one who would bring good fortune. But Emiene would not hear or listen to her husband. What if the diviner was lying? He may lack the power to help us and had come up with this story so he won't look powerless. I have waited and suffered mockery for six years already. I can't wait any longer, Emiene said to her husband. And so, Emiene continued the search for solution to her problem, but this time without the knowledge and support of her husband. Soon, she met another native doctor who assured her that she would help her. You don't have to wait for nine more years to have a child. More so, you can have more children as you wished, not just one, the native doctor told her. Emiene was happy and pleased with this news. But I am afraid, the native doctor continued, the seed of jealousy would devour your children and cause you more sorrow, the native doctor informed her. I would ensure that does not happen. I would love and treat all my children equally. What I do to one, I will do to the other. What I give to one, I will give to the others. Just make me a mother, Emiene said. And so, she was asked to perform some sacrifices, which she did. Few months later, Emiene became pregnant and delivered twin baby girls months later. To her husband's surprise, I told you that the other diviner was lying. Yeah, see our twin babies, Emine said happily to her husband. The couple named their daughters Oma and Oyiwodu. The twin girls grew up to become very beautiful and the envy of all other maidens in the village. Emiene, their mother, kept her promise of loving and treating them equally and making them comfortable. Apart from being such beautiful maidens, they were also very good dancers. Whenever they danced, people wondered how two sisters would be so blessed by the gods with the act of dancing as though they were spirits. People from other villages would come to their village just to watch the twin sisters dance, especially during times of festivals and special 
occasions. Many young men desire to have them as wives, but the girls and their mother decided that they would not settle for anything less. Soon, it was announced that the prince who had been away in America since he was a child would be returning home to choose a bride and eventually ascend the throne after his father, the king's demise. During this time, all the maidens in the village would be allowed free access to the palace on a daily basis for a period of three months. They are to come with their best gifts to win the heart of the prince. These gifts could be something tangible or an act of service. Eventually, the prince, Prince Ewaoche, arrived and like the information passed, maidens started trooping in into the palace bearing their gifts. Some came with food, others with clothes, some even sang songs with beautiful melodies while some told stories to entertain the prince. Along with the prince was his cousin who had been with him in America and also returned home with him. This cousin's name was Ocholuji. He was always seen with Prince Ewauche every time. When some of the maidens come to present their gifts, some of them were nice to also give a gift to Ocholuji and some who offer gifts of service such as singing, dancing or storytelling were nice enough to respond to questions about their song, dance or story when asked by Ushuluji. However, some other maidens ignored the prince's cousin. They would only offer their gifts to the prince alone and when asked a question by Ushuluji, they would ignore him giving him a disdainful look and turning their attention back to the prince. With the other maidens who go to the palace were Oma and Oiwodu. They also go to dance for the prince as part of their gifts for him. The prince so much loved how the twin sisters dance. They were also very beautiful. The prince had told his parents, the king and queen, how much he would have loved to marry both sisters, but their custom permits him to marry only one woman at a time. So he had to choose between the twin sisters who he would marry first and who would also be the future queen. Oma, like the other arrogant maidens, also ignores Oshuluji whenever he spoke to her. Why would she pay attention to an ordinary man who does nothing but follows his cousin, the prince, all day? How can a grown-up man like that not have sense and make himself useful instead of following the prince everywhere as though he is one of the guards? He is always smiling like a clown and jumps into discussions he is not invited into. Why should she waste her time and give him any attention when her goal is on the prince? Oma would always say. One of those days, during her visit to the palace, Osholuje had asked if she would do him the honor of marrying him if the prince did not pick her at the end. But Oma got furious and poured the cup of water she was holding on him. How would he ask her such? What infantry she snapped and walked out on him? Or you what do on the other hand admires the calm and always smiling cousin of the prince. She considers him humble to always save and be with the prince. And so, Whenever Osholuje spoke to her, she responds to him nicely. 
she also dances more if he requests the honor of getting more dance performance from her. And when he asked her the same question he had asked her sister, Oiwodu replied that she will marry him if the gods destined it to be that way. To Oiwodu, Prince or no Prince, Ushoduje was a fine and good man and she was already falling in love with him. Oma, her sister, called her a fool for thinking of settling for someone less. But she was glad that she would have the prince for herself, as rumor and legit source had confirmed that the prince is interested in one of the twin dancing sisters. After all, I am the older between my sister and I. I am also the better dancer and the more beautiful one. I deserve the prince more, she bragged. Hey there, enjoying the story? Then you might want to subscribe to this channel for more interesting stories. We post captivating and exciting traditional and modern folktales three times every week. You should also turn on the notification bell so you'll be the first to know when we post a new story. Very well then, now that you've done that, let's dive right back into our story. The day came for the prince to publicly announce whom he had chosen as his bride. While everyone eagerly waited for his announcement, all the maidens and villagers got shocked when it was revealed that Osholuje is the actual real prince and Ewaoshe, who they had thought was the prince, was just his maternal cousin. Only the king, the queen, the kingmaker and two other elders knew about the secrets. He had been away since he was a child and many people was unable to recognize him. It was a test to find the maiden who would be queen in Fusho. They wanted such maiden to be someone with a good and kind heart. The royal family thanked every other maiden who showed kindness despite not knowing who the real prince was and promised to reward them graciously. After this, Prince Osholuje announced that he chose Oiwodu with the purest of hearts and whom he had fallen in love with. Oma, on hearing this and realizing she had lost house, was filled with anger and jealousy. I am better in everything compared to my sister, she said. Why should she have the prince? She begged her parents to offer her to the prince instead as she was the older of the twin and as the prince would not be able to tell she and her sister a part. But her father would hear nothing of such wicked and abominable acts. Her efforts to try to persuade her parents to replace her with her sister without the king and prince's knowledge yielded no results. Few days to Oiwodu's wedding with the prince, Oma hit her sister with a wood on the head and killed her instantly on a lonely bush path on their way back from the beet seller's place where their mother had sent them to go collect the beets they had purchased for the forthcoming wedding. Unfortunately for Oma, someone had seen her when she carried out her evil deed. She was taken to the palace and as the consequence of her crime was death also according to the custom of their land, Oma was also beheaded. It was a sad moment for the old villagers but much more sad for Idoko and Emiene. They had lost their children in their old age. Emiene remembered the warnings of the diviner. 
she wished she had been patient. She had thought she would be able to manage the situation. I hope you enjoyed the story. What do you think about the story? Share your thoughts in the comment section. See you in our next video.